Hey guys, Mike Linares here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Today we're wrapping up premature contractions. Basically, what happens when the heart sneezes. <laughs> now to be all fancy, the PAC is a premature atrial contraction, basically just an atrial sneezing. PJC is a premature junctional contraction, which is just a junctional sneeze. And a PVC is the premature ventricular contraction and just like all the others, you guessed it, it's a ventricular squeeze. These premature contractions are also called complexes and are contractions that occur early and before the next normal impulse. So what's this gonna look like on an EKG? Well, using our five steps, let's interpret this EKG. So a PAC, the rate can occur at any time. The rhythm is regular, but usually interrupted due to early P waves. The P wave is early, guys. That's the biggest part of this. The P wave is early and often may be hidden in the T wave. Now the PR interval. The early P wave has shortened that normal PR interval, but still has between 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. Now the QRS wave that follows that early P wave is usually normal. Now a PJC, or premature junctional contraction, basically those tractions happening between the atriums and the ventricles. The rate usually depends on the underlying rhythm. The rhythm is mostly irregular, and the P wave is absent or inverted or even buried inside of that PJC. Now the PR interval, there should be none or maybe even shorter ones, and the QRS is usually normal. Now, lastly, the PVC all depends on the underlying rate. Now, the rhythm is irregular when the PVC occurs. The P wave and the PR interval are not even associated with the PVC, and the QRSs are wide and looking bizarre. All these premature contractions are happening way too early and basically just contracting prematurely. Now, what are the causes of premature contractions? Well, the main causes are quite simple. It's the three S's the stimulants, the sepsis, and the stress. So stimulants like caffeine or cigarettes, even alcohol, I call the three wise men, but even hyperthyroidism can cause an increased metabolism, and also digoxin toxicity can play a factor in overcontractility of the heart. Now sepsis or infection of the body, like rheumatic fever, can also cause premature contraction. And lastly, stress like anxiety from the normal daily emotional struggles. We have to read all these chapters. But also diseases that put added stress and inflammation on the heart, like CAD, the narrowing of the coronary arteries in the heart, adds stress to the heart. Or CHF, heart failure, increases the blood pressure, adding pressure on the heart. Even myocarditis and rheumatic fever diseases both cause inflammation to the heart. And lastly, even COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, makes it difficult for the body to get that oxygen, which basically adds stress to the heart. Okay, now last, last, but not least, the electrolyte imbalances like hypokalemia, or low potassium, can cause electrical problems like premature contractions. Now, signs and symptoms for premature contractions. Guys, we usually don't see any signs and symptoms with mild cases. Now, you may have even experienced a premature contraction today or like even like right now and didn't even realize it. But if by chance you have multiple premature contractions in a row, then your patients might say subjective data like, I feel my heart skipping a beat or I feel my heart pounding or even like I feel a quivering in the chest, like a little baby fetus is kicking me in the chest. There may be a pulse deficit and possibly hypotension, which is just fancy words for low blood pressure. So guys, what are we gonna do about it as nurses? Well, some priority nursing interventions and treatments for premature contractions. So first, identify and eliminate the underlying causes. So guys, you have to patient educate about the prevention of the three S's, the three triggers, really. Stress, sepsis, and stimulants, like caffeine, cigarettes, and alcohol. Lastly, medications. We might discontinue or just lower the dose of digoxin. So guys, please write that down. Because digoxin is known as an inotropic drug. It basically increases the contractility of the heart. And it could be the reason that our heart is prematurely contracting. Also, we can correct the electrolyte imbalances, and lastly, we can relax the heart with drugs like procainamide, lidocaine, and amiodarone, 
if warranted. Now, just FYI, some nursing considerations. B and C drugs, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, all given to slow the heart rate, can suppress these premature contractions. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.